Today, Mr. Mather is here with us uh, to give us some help with our idea generation. And remember, idea generation is when you take all your brainstorming ideas and then you put it into a drawing that other people can understand. And one of the things that you do when you do a drawing to help other people understand is you make it so that it looks 3D. And Mr. Mathers here today going to talk about that a little bit. So. Yeah. So I make public art projects with people all over Georgia. And sometimes they have great ideas. And they come up to me and they want to tell me their great ideas. Mr. Mather, what if the sculpture kind of had this part that came over here and then underneath? And they start talking to me like that. And I say, I can tell you have a great idea. Please draw it down. Because words will only take us that far. And we're going to be better communicators about this kind of thinking if we draw. So I have to get people drawing who aren't necessarily always used to drawing. But here's how we do it. We talk about drawing as something our bodies know how to do. Now, our bodies sometimes need to get all together with our brains so that we can work together and be good designers, good problem solvers. Let's do just a quick warm up for our bodies. Cross your ankles underneath your chair, or out in front of your chair, I mean, under the table. And then put your arms up in, in, in front of you with your thumbs pointed at the floor. And then you go a little bit stiff, then one hand goes up a little higher, and then over, and then back down. Thumbs are still pointed down at the floor or the table. You get a little stretch on the back of your forearms when you press your hands together and grab on tight. Pull inside out, and that's more comfortable. One finger springs free, and you put that on the side of your neck very lightly. We're going to breathe three times with deep breaths, but with very little sound, no sound. Three breaths. As a design coach, I emphasize muscle memory, the physicality of drawing and designing. A lot of good design work can be stuck in people's heads. And I coach all age groups, so I've seen it happen a lot with adults, somewhat with high school kids, less so with elementary school kids. They're pretty free, they're pretty loose with their drawings. But one thing I like to do as a warm up is part of a vocabulary of movements, very simple movements that are referred to as brain gem. And this has to do with crossing the line of symmetry of your body. And it turns out, and they've done many studies of this, that when you do body movements that cross the line of symmetry of the body, it activates both hemispheres of the brain. And this elevates problem solving abilities. So asking them to design, well, designing is problem solving. So I find that it does a couple of things. One is it makes them work more fluidly. The other is it creates focus. So sometimes I ask people to do that when it's time to draw and design. I have my juggling clubs here today. And I know you guys know I'm a sculptor, so sometimes when I pull out juggling clubs, people look at me a little confused. Mr. Mather, you're a visual artist. You're not a performing artist. Why would you have juggling clubs? But when I juggle, I remind myself that juggling is like drawing, and drawing is like juggling. They are both things that my body knows how to do, and I do my best at both things when I'm most relaxed in my body. So the Muscle memory is what I'm talking about. Say muscle memory for me. Muscle memory. Our muscles remember things very well. They say, when you learn to ride a bicycle, you never forget how. We forget lots of things. How come we don't forget how to ride a bicycle? Because you don't learn it up here. You learn it in your body. But we're going to give you some sketch paper, and we're going to do a drawing. And neatness does not really matter for this. There's a time for drawing neatly. This is not one of those times. We're going to draw very loose and relaxed. You ready? Yeah. Okay, so we need to get you some paper and some pencils. All right, what I would like for you to do today, um, we, everybody say the word perspective. Perspective. Perspective is a way of seeing things in 3D. Now, when you are drawing something, why might you want to see your idea in 3D. Why would that be a helpful thing? Why would that be a helpful thing? Tyra, speak real loud so I can hear you. So we can know, you know, okay, so we can really understand what it's going to look like. Boys and girls, what we're getting ready to do next is Mr. Mather's going to come up and the two of us are going to talk about how to best show your idea in three dimensions and 3D. And we're going to use the tools of perspective. Um, and I want you just to relax. Don't think about your idea yet. 
because we have some vocabulary and some things to share with you. And then we'll move into getting that idea down on paper. Okay? So, Mr. Mather, come on back up. Okay. So, we gave you a piece of paper that's not a blank piece of paper. It actually has a very softly printed photo of the part of the school where this garden bench project that you're thinking of ideas for will be built. So I'm what's called a site sculptor, which means I don't go off into a shop and make a sculpture and then only later figure out where it can go. We always start with the where can it go question first, which is why you don't have blank paper. You have a piece of paper that shows a particular part of school. But before we're going to get into putting your designs on that side, take your piece of paper, I've got it enlarged with the document camera, and flip it upside down for a minute. Okay. I'm going to use one of the digital markers on the smart board, and I'm going to draw a box, just a simple rectangle, and I'd like you to do this too. So get a pencil, any color will do, any color at all, doesn't matter. Probably a darker color would be good. And I want you to draw a rectangle. And it doesn't matter about straight lines. We're being relaxed. And if your lines come out crooked, that's OK. For this, that's OK. I want you to draw a large rectangle on your paper. And mine doesn't look perfectly straight, but I like it just fine. OK. We call this a 2D shape, a flat rectangle, but we want to think about 3D ideas, like Ms. Bryant just said. When I say that art is 2D or 3D, what does the D stand for? Dimension. Tell me. I saw the hands up. Dimension. Excellent. Two-dimensional or three-dimensional. Now, I'm going to give you another D word that works just as well for what we're doing, and that word is direction. Two directions or three directions. Right now, this rectangle is only moving in two directions, up and down and side to side. But I'm going to stop calling it a rectangle, and I'm going to start calling it a window. And if it's a window, we can pretend we're looking through the window, and we can pretend that we're anywhere we want to be. So let's look out this window and pretend we're not even in Atlanta anymore. We might be in open countryside somewhere. Take your pencil and split your view looking out the window with a line across the middle. And we're going to say from now on, everything above that line is sky, and everything below that line is the Earth. We have a name for the imaginary line between Earth and sky, and it begins with an H, and I see some hands up. What is it? Yes, tell me. Yes. The horizon line. Horizon line is what I was hoping someone would say. So yes, that is a horizon line, which is where we get the word horizontal. When things are flat or level, they're like echoes of the original horizon itself. Now, going back into space in our imaginations, out the window, traveling towards the far horizon, I want you to put a dot somewhere on the horizon line, big enough that you can see it. And now we're going to make some lines that come towards us in space out of that dot. These do not have to be solid lines. They can be broken lines, like dash, 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 or like a dotted line. Put your pencil on the dot, and here we come with some broken lines that are coming down below the horizon, headed towards the bottom of the window. And then when they come to the bottom of the window box, they keep going. We just don't see them anymore. They've gone out of view past our window frame. Back to the dot. And again, we go down, down, down with a broken line. Now, I want to make sure while they're drawing that, does anybody know what that dot, the, the starting place for all our dashed lines? Myron, what is that called? It's called the VP line. The VP. Excellent. Now, who knows what the VP stands for? Who knows what the VP stands for? Um, go ahead, Sam, real nice and loud. The, van the vanishing point. Very good. The vanishing Very good. point. Very good. OK. One more. Let's do one more. Back to the dot with your pencil. This time, let's go above the horizon into the sky. A broken line that goes up, 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 almost like an airplane or a helicopter flying towards us, getting closer and closer, and then it flies past us over our left shoulder. OK, so these broken lines are moving in a third direction. When we only had a flat 2D shape, we said it was moving in two directions, up and down and side to side. Well, side to side movement, sometimes we call that movement X movement. Put a small X underneath your window and make arrows that say side to side would be X movement. 
up and down, sometimes we say that small y movement. And boys and girls, you'll see this again when you take geometry later on when you're like in high school. Yes. You'll see x and y, axis is what it's called. You also see this in 3D printing. When you, next year when you take 3D printing with me, we'll talk a lot about x and y axis. That's two directions. Yes. Now I'll bet you know what letter we use for the third direction, x, y, and z. z. These are Z lines. You can put a little Z right next to them. And this time the arrows say towards the horizon, towards the vanishing point, or towards us. That's that kind of movement, Z movement. And that's what is also called perspective. Ms. Bryant used that word a minute ago. Big word, P E R S P E C T I V E. That's kind of a $10 word perspective, but it's got a very simple meaning. It just means that's what I see. I look out the window, that's my view. That's what I see, that's my perspective. So we call these Z lines also perspective lines because they lead our eye back into space. Let's do just one quick warm up thing that gets us ready to go to the flip side photo. When I look at these Z lines, I see that the closer they get to the horizon, the closer they get to each other. Everything is converging. The easiest, most relaxing thing I know for a warm-up drawing is shrinking clouds. Because if everything's converging, well, another word for converging is just shrinking. Let's make some freehand, very relaxed looking clouds. The only thing I would say is not ball-like clouds, but sort of stretched out like sunset clouds. But as they drop down in the sky, they get skinnier and smaller and skinnier and smaller. So the first one is up high. Let's freehand a cloud up there, but sort of stretch it out Sort of a hot dog shaped cloud. Underneath it, a very similar cloud, but it's skinnier and flatter. And underneath it, an even skinnier one. This one's so skinny it hardly looks like a cloud. It looks like a funny squiggle moving across the sky. Do you guys notice how the clouds are getting skinnier and skinnier? They're not as big and, and, and tall, if you will. So the Y is not as big. The Y is shrinking. Now we're not trying to make a pretty picture here, we're no. just getting warmed up. So that's why I said neatness is not that important right now. It's about the idea of space. We're getting warmed up to make sure we can communicate and about Mr. space. And Mr. Mather, I'm going to capture this image so we have it for our data bank, okay? Great. Okay, very good. Okay, so I'm going to erase my warm up and we're going to flip our photos over now. You guys can flip your photo over please. With our sketch paper turned back over to the photo side, having done our warm up, I think it's helpful because right away I can see Z lines on our photo. What are those Z lines that are starting back in space and coming towards us in this photo? What are those lines describing? Yes, tell me. The sidewalk. She said the edges of the sidewalk. Everybody recognize those? Yeah. Yes, that's just the edges of the sidewalk. So. We had railroad tracks in our warm-up. You could do a road. This is just a sidewalk that runs by the raised bed gardens outside and then the area near the tinker yard over here. Now, Miss Bryant has sketched in something to help us with generating ideas for the, for the uh, garden bench, and that is a pallet. Not only has she drawn a pallet over here, but she's left it so it's kind of floating up in midair so that you guys can give it legs. Now, let me use one of the markers again. You everybody see the palette? Okay, so I know if I'm going to put a leg on one corner of the palette, it's going to be a larger, thicker leg when it's up close. But if this is closer to the vanishing point dot, then that's going to be smaller. Just like our clouds were shrinking, so will our legs be shrinking. So this leg will be skinnier and shorter because it's further away in space. Now, Mr. Mather. Ms. Bryant. Do all of the benches that these guys draw, do they have to have legs that look just like that? No, I'm just doing a quick demonstration. Your legs could have interesting sculptural shapes or patterns. And I want you guys to think a little bit about what shapes you see out in the tinker yard. As you're designing the legs, as you're designing uh, the components of your bench, I want you to think about some of the shapes that you already see and some of the, th the, uh, the lines, the type of lines that you see out there. 
Um, who can name for me a shape that you see frequently when you go out to the tinker yard? What's a shape that you often see? Avery? Squiggly, Squiggly lines. Squiggly lines, okay. Mm -hmm. uh, Josh? Rectangles. Rectangles, okay. Free? Triangles. Triangles, okay. Those are good. Those are types of shapes. Now we got a, a type of line in there too. Who can name for me another type of line that you see a lot of? Uh, Zelda? Horizontal. Horizontal lines, very good. Alexandria? A 3D line. 3D line. What do you mean by that? The, the colored sticks are kind of like 3D lines because they're not, they're not actually straight. They have like, they're kind of bigger in their Oh, line. the ones okay. that have some sculptural shape to them that we yeah. made for the Tinker Yard. Yes. Okay. Um, Elias? Parallel lines. Parallel lines, yeah. So you guys are, are I'm, I'm asking you these questions to kind of jog your memory a little bit about the types of lines and shapes that you actually see in the Tinker Yard. Um, and I'm gonna let Mr. Mather, would you um, maybe show them how we could incorporate some of those? Right, so if we know we have some material that's lined up for this project in the form of these existing pallets, what can we do to take advantage of those surfaces and then build up some of the other parts of a good garden bench and make it look fun like the Tinker Yard looks like so much fun. And then so there's one more component that yes, we need please. to think about. We yes. need to also think about our master gardener. Before we draw, we need to think about some of the things that she asked for. She, she asked us for, remember back to our research where we emailed her and then she came in and responded. I want you to think back to her responses. She needs a place to put her shovels. She needs a place, some shelves maybe, some locking doors maybe, or some mm -hmm. way to secure the tools in there. So yes. remember to think about all of those things too. You want to make it look nice, but it also has to be functional. It has to work. Right. So let's take advantage of how much space there is above a pallet like that and make sure that we enclose some of that space so she can keep her tools inside. So this is what I want you to do, and you can switch colors, maybe use at least two different colors out of your pencil box or pencil bin. And let's start to add some shapes that create space to put tools in, but also have some of the Tinker Yard shapes that we know and love. And I just heard people saying those parallel lines, those sculptural lines. Triangles. That's right, we have triangular shapes. There's even yes. some wheels out there, some curves. So let's just start to build this. Okay. And you, I can, you guys can all get started right now. Yes, go, go ahead. ahead and start. The things that come out of Courtney Bryant's engineering lab are meant for real world applications. And we want them to design things that don't just sit on the table in here in isolation. That, you know, part of the ways that Courtney and I think uh, connect on our thinking is that we both think of work in context. So I'm what's called a site sculptor, which means I don't have a studio practice. I don't create sculptures apart from community. I only work in partnership with community. So we had these photos of a very particular part of the school environment that became the sketch paper for the students. And for them to execute a design for this garden bench project or any of the parts of the Tinker Yard that look like they really belong out there, they really fit that setting and that environment, um, they need to be able to draw in perspective. Now this is quite ahead of schedule for where they might be introduced to perspective in another school or another setting. But for second graders to be able to take a photo of a site and understand about using the vanishing point and the perspective lines and make their drawing recede uh, with the illusion of 3D into the photo, makes it, they're communicating more clearly about their wishes for their designs. Now I like the way that Maya is outlining her shapes and using doubled lines to show the thickness and then she's adding a contrasting color in between her doubled lines, which makes it read really well in perspective. And the other thing that's cool about having the double lines is it actually gives us clues as to how to build nice. it because the double lines actually make it look like a piece of wood that we could cut out and actually assemble.